Hello again everyone, welcome to another Snapmaker video. So in this video we're going to talk work holding. I've been getting a lot of questions based on my setup. I just thought I'd take you through what this is in my, uh, my laser setup and how I ended up doing this. Now I, I've been through quite a few iterations of these fences, these clamps, just trying different things, trying to find something that works and is repeatable, doesn't take long to set up your jobs, and just, uh, you know, minimizing errors, failed prints, you know, all sorts of crap that normally happens, especially when you're using these garbage silicon plugs. I don't even know why these are included. They're sh useless. All right. So anyway, what have I got here? So we have what are commonly known as fences. Um, these are sort of hard stops for setting up and aligning your work pieces. These are bolted through to the normal holes that the bed would use. Uh, and that's what sets, um, sort of, it gets you in the ballpark of being square with each axis because those bolt holes are already factory. So it gets you pretty close to where you need to be already. Now, a few people have asked, what are these? Like, where did I get them from? How did I make them? So what I'll do is I'll share some photos with you just showing you how I did it. Unfortunately, I have a, well, fortunately for me, I have a machine shop-ish, and I can do this sort of stuff. I wouldn't expect you to be able to do a lot of this. You have limitations, but that's not to say you can't do it. You can be inventive. You can come up with ideas and ways to work around this. Now, how I started out with this was I used just 90 degree aluminium angle iron well not iron but aluminium extrusion like that now the final version that I'm using is made out of this big boy stuff which is really thick uh, quite heavy as well um, why did I use it this thick I don't know because I felt like it and I, I like overkill especially when I have to machine it anyway so I just made it as stout as I possibly could um, so basically I cut it down to size, drilled a couple of holes, dropped it on the bed. The only difference, the big difference with me, because I've got a milling machine, is I cut down this fence by about half or less. Uh, just to r bring it down so there's less chance of the laser head crashing into it. Now, it, you could still use... The full size stuff but you would most likely have to stack it up to try and just keep the edges clear i don't like running a laser head when there's things it can run into that's not to say it would happen but you don't know crazy things happen in the, in this sort of maker space so yeah there's a little off cut that i had and you can you can see the uh the height difference it's significant anyway so what are the advantages? Well, like I said, it's just about consistency in your jobs. If this is square to the way the laser head is running, or sorry, the bed is running in this case, and this is square or parallel, should I say, to the laser head movement, then your jobs are perfectly aligned and you're not going to end up with prints that are slightly sideways and just crazy things happening now obviously you could just drill some holes and you could drop this on the bed you're probably not going to get i mean you you might get pretty close you might get lucky but it might not be running true like perfect so there's two ways that i've gotten around this now i have a dial indicator which helps a lot and by the more you press on it the more it moves in and out to, to measure distance um like I said, I wouldn't expect you to have something like these. They're a great tool to have. 
uh, initially, well, sorry, the way I finally did it is I actually had this mounted in the hood of the laser and I would tram it along the front edge of the, of the fence and I would just tap it a little bit and I would get it square. So when you run this laser from this end to this end, there's little to no movement on the dial indicator. Now there's always going to be a little bit. Uh, this machine's not stout. I mean, it's, it's a great machine. Don't get me wrong, it's way better than most of the stuff on the market, but it's not, it's not like a high level milling machine. So that's one way to do it, if you've got a dial indicator. If you don't have a dial indicator, there is another way that I sort of worked out later on. If you bring, if you just have these just slightly snug, not tight, you can actually bring the hood of the laser down against the fence, just gently nudge it, and then uh, move the laser hood, or the laser head, should I say, all the way across, and just let it nudge the fence so it's just running nice and parallel to it. You can also do the same on this one. So you just want it slightly touching and then you just run it across the fence with the bolts not tight because you don't want to crash it, you don't want it binding up. You just want it to sort of nudge the fence a little bit to help line it up and just keep it running true with the machine. Now, even if you had the facilities that you could drill this dead accurate with the holes, you're still going to have to tram it in when you put it on the bed. Because who says the holes on the bed are parallel? They might not be. So you need to have, you need to drill these holes slightly oversized and just have a bit of wiggle room on each side so you can, you can work it a little bit and figure out where you want to be. Now, if you don't have any crazy tools at home and you've just got hand drills and things like that, you can probably pull this off still. You just have to take the holes maybe a bit bigger than you normally would and just give yourself some free play and use a nice thick washer like I've done here to um, really clamp down on it when you tighten it, but not so much that you warp the bed. But if anything, this will actually make the bed even more true because you, you're putting extra bracing on it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now the the hole distances are really weird on this. I think they were like two a, a two thirty, two hundred and thirty four millimeters if I remember correctly, which is a really odd size. I don't know if they vary from machine to machine, so don't take that as gospel. You should really measure your own holes on your bed before you go drilling anything. But I would say the distance has to be pretty perfect ish within a millimeter. Um, drill the holes oversize a bit. And then you can sort of work the fence with the laser hood touching it uh, and just let it sort of find its own path across. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, what can we do with the fences? Well, <laughs> it, they'll change your life. Compared to the silicon plugs, you can do jobs fast. You can do them accurately. You can do them repeatedly. So, you know, I've got a, a lunchbox lid here. I can just drop that in, put it into the fences. Um, don't know if you can see on it, but that, that's, that's true already. And I know it's true, because this is running within 0 0.02 millimeters, I think it was. It's very accurate. Now, these clamps are just the CNC clamps that you would normally have flipped this way and down on the bed. I figured out you could put some, stack some uh, nuts in there and you, some bolts and you can fan dangle it a little bit and you can make a nice little clamp that you can uh, move around and then you can just tighten it with an Allen key when you're happy with where it's sitting or you want to lock it in. Um, I just put a couple of rubber bands around the perimeter just to give it a bit of compression. Uh, it just helps bite into the materials a little bit more. Now, depending on the job you're doing, uh, you know, you'd stack up some blocks just to take up any space if the, they don't work and you would clamp that down like that and that, that holds it in that position. Um, and sometimes the friction from this is enough that you don't need to do it in this direction as well. 
but sometimes like that it will move depending on how slippery it is so sometimes you've got to do the top as well now it's over here at the moment sometimes i can have it over here it depends on the job uh, at the moment my machine is set up for the jobs that i've been doing so you know you can you can do a lunchbox lid you can uh you just you can lock the clamps in like that take it out drop another one in uh, you don't even have to redo your laser calibration. You can just bring it straight back to where it started from again. Take another one out. Do another one. No setup. No errors. Just go. You put, put some effort into doing this properly the first time. It will pay itself off a hundred times in the amount of time it takes to set up your jobs. So, yeah. So, you know, you've got a lunchbox lid. You know, I might do some uh, do some books as well. I can drop a book in there. Uh, you know, I could go for a larger book. So, you know, it's set up for how I normally do it. Now, these fences, as you can see, they're, they're taking up a bit of the bed real estate. You can flip them and offset it to the back and rec reclaim a lot of that space. I don't need that at the moment, so I just... I just leave it like this because it brings everything closer to the center of the bed anyway, which is where I like it. Now, obviously, with a job like this, um, you're starting to get, you know, you're starting to get a bit of a gap underneath this fence. And this is where you can have problems because if your laser goes AWOL and decides to just head over to the corner or something, you could run into this and crash the, the laser module. So you don't want that. So probably the last piece of the puzzle that I would suggest is um, you can get some parallels, machinist parallels like this. That's what I use. They're about 80 bucks or something. They're really heavy. Uh, they're quite stout. And you can drop them onto the bed like that. And you, suddenly you've got your workpiece sitting in there. And look at that, it's above the, f oh, can't really tell, can you? It's above the fence now, it's just, it's just holding it where it needs to be. Now, these parallels, you know, they're different thicknesses, they're different sizes. Um, so you, you can customise uh, however you want them to be. I was actually using these as my fences in the beginning before I got off my butt and actually did some proper work holding setup. Um, so yeah, just think outside the box. You can come up with some ideas on how you want this to be and how it suits the jobs that you want to do. Um, covered everything? I think we covered everything? Pretty sure we have. I hope this helps you use your machine better and not use those stupid silicon plugs because whoever came up with that idea needs to be shot because it's really bad. Any questions, put them in the comments. I can do a follow-up video. I hope it helps you. And keep making. See you in the next video.